you might have noticed that planes don't fly over the Pacific Ocean to reach your destination, even though the route seems to be small. Today, in this video, we explore the scientific, economic, and strategic reasons to understand why planes don't fly over the Pacific Ocean. Let's begin. First, let us start with the scientific reasons. Usually, a flight going to China from the US prefers to take a curvy route that passes through Alaska and Siberia. But why a curvy route? Wouldn't it be shorter and better if the planes took a straight route? On a flat map, when we compare both the routes, the straight one is shorter, but in reality, it isn't. You might think that we've lost our senses. Don't worry, we'll explain why. First of all, the Earth is not straight. The flat maps are just for representation. Our Earth is spherical. So when we measure both the routes on a globe, we will see that the curvy route will be shorter than the straight route. A straight line in a 2D map is not the same as a straight line on a 3D globe. Therefore, planes travel along the shortest route based on a three-dimensional space. Such route is known as a geodesic or great circle route, which are commonly used for navigation, sailing, and aviation. Do you know why it is known as a great circle route? This is because it forms a circle on the globe in such a way that the plane passing through the sphere's center equals the circumference of the Earth. At the great circle, the radius of the route is equal to that of the globe. To understand it better, let us cut the globe in two from the east. When we do this, it will form two identical portions. The line at which the circle was made is the great circle. This doesn't end here. You'll be amazed to know that the vertical circumference from the North Pole is less than the horizontal circumference from the East Pole. The Earth at the equator is a little more stretched and elliptical. According to scientific research, Vertical circumference is 24,860 miles, whereas horizontal circumference is 24,901 miles. The difference is 41 miles. As we can see, for us the largest great circle is at our equator. Similarly, the longitudinal lines also cut two equal portions. Any meridian line is a great circle. Therefore, the airlines measure the great circles and choose the shortest distance for their travel. In short, the curvy route becomes shorter due to the curvature of the Earth. Another scientific reason is tropopause. Planes travel above 30,000 feet in the troposphere. The reason is that the air pressure in the troposphere is moderate, thin enough to minimize the drag and thick enough to provide an adequate amount of lift to the plane. There is a lot that happens below, in and above the tropopause. Within the troposphere, temperatures generally decrease with an increase in altitude. In this area, there is low stability as the overturning of air is frequent. It holds all the water vapor in the atmosphere. Most flying occurs in this layer. The temperature stops to decrease with height at the end of the tropopause. Moreover, the height of the tropopause changes depending on the latitude, season of the year, and weather conditions. Not only that, the tropopause is approximately 26,000 feet over the poles and approximately 52,000 feet over the equator. The average height of the tropopause is 36,090 feet at about 45 degrees latitude. This is because the thickness of the troposphere depends on the amount of solar energy affecting the air. In simple terms, the tropopause is lower over in areas where the air is cold and higher where the air is warm. Moreover, large temperature differentials occur at some places and there are breaks in the tropopause. Such breaks can cause strong winds resulting in jet streams. The performance of the aircraft changes depending on the temperature change. Such jet streams can cause extreme shear levels and sudden breaks with change in latitude. Now, coming back to our original question of the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is stretched over the equator and thus there are more chances of these break or jet streams. Therefore, 
To avoid these, the planes choose an alternative route. Another reason for planes to avoid the Pacific Oceans is the lack of oxygen, but there is less turbulence over water surfaces as compared to land. Airlines will still not choose to take that ocean route. Let us dig deeper into this. As we all know that water is a great conductor of heat and it holds the heat for an elongated time. This is the reason we don't see large fluctuations in temperatures during winter and summer at places that are located on or near any water bodies. On the contrary, in deserts, there are the sharpest drops of heat during nighttime, as we all know that stone and soil are very poor conductors of heat. Conclusively, it means that there is a war between the hot and cold air above the ocean. The tug of war between hot and cold air determines the severity of the turbulence. When flights travel between these two different air temperatures, turbulence occurs. Just imagine the level of turbulence when you are into this zone underneath those jet streams. This huge turbulence can cause the luggage section above to open, resulting in the luggage falling from the overhead compartments. Not only that, in these severe conditions, there are great chances of lack of oxygen. Usually a plane has oxygen for 30 to 40 minutes. To get more oxygen, the plane has to descend to lower heights. It is known as the drift down procedure, in which the plane has to decline below 10,000 feet. To avoid such instances, planes avoid traveling above the Pacific Ocean. As we have seen earlier that the routes from the polar ends are shorter due to the curvature of the Earth, it will cost less fuel. None of the wise businesses will choose the longer routes. An airline is on the market to book profits. They have to find the cheapest and quickest routes to their destinations. Less fuel cost and time saving makes the price affordable for consumers. Similar to the cost, time doesn't only benefit the airline. Passengers prefer to fly fewer hours on the plane. Travelers choose the flights with the shortest routes and fewer flying hours. Moving further, safety is another reason airlines don't prefer to fly over the Pacific Ocean. Planes are machines and there are chances of malfunctions. This might result in an emergency landing. First of all, landing on water is not safe. Secondly, the Pacific Ocean is the largest and deepest ocean. God forbid if anything should happen. Imagine the fuss the airline has to bear. Moreover, the passengers will be stranded for hours in the midst of nowhere. We can see only water all around us. Even though we assume that help can reach us in a few hours, there are chances of other dangers being in the sea. Unexpected events like storms, shark attacks, and whatnot can happen. Additionally, in the case of an emergency landing, a runway is considered to be the safest option. This is the reason airlines define their routes with the maximum number of airports where they can land in terms of an emergency safeguarding interests of passengers and the airline staff. This is the reason flights don't choose the route over the Pacific Ocean. Moving further, there is a scarcity of airports on the Pacific route. Airplanes must follow a geodesic curve. This simply means that on the way to their destination, the plane can hop at one airport on the way. There should also be another airport near it that has the same distance from the destination. Mostly, all airlines define routes based on this. As there aren't many airports on the Pacific route, planes avoid choosing that route. Another reason why commercial airplanes don't fly over the Pacific Ocean is because of military training sessions in the region. Many countries continuously conduct drills in these areas. Commercial airlines are restricted to fly over those areas to avoid danger, as well as to save interruptions in the training. Planes are traced using radar technology, but it is only effective up to 200 miles. That is why you will see the routes of airlines mostly connected to coasts. Planes that fly farther than 200 miles over the ocean will receive a position signal, but will not be able to transmit that back. Radar lacks line of sight from the ground station and cannot track the planes far in the ocean. It is not that planes completely don't fly over the Pacific. Of course, some routes fly over the Pacific Ocean. These routes go to places like Fiji, Vanuatu, New Caledonia, Nauru, Solomon Islands, Hawaii, Japan and New Zealand. 
All these places are located in the Pacific Ocean, and so they are impossible to avoid. To conclude, the routes above the Pacific are dangerous in many ways, and that is the reason flights don't use those routes. Now, whenever you travel on long flights, you will recall all of these interesting things. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and share it with friends who would love to know all these interesting facts. Hit the subscribe button for your weekly dose of informative fun and ring the bell icon to never miss a video from us.